Moving on to long head of biceps tendinopathy. Now this is a spectrum of uh, pathology that uh, ranges from inflammatory tendinitis through to degenerative tendinosis. Uh, there's controversy surrounding the uh, function and treatment of uh, disorders of the long head of biceps. And it's seen that isolated long head of biceps tendinopathy is exceptionally rare and it usually presents along with other shoulder problems, either impingement, rotator cuff disorders, slap lesions, which we've discussed, um, and bursitis or AC joint disorders. The long head of biceps, as we'll remember, originates uh, from the supraglenoid tubercle um, with somewhere between uh, 60, 40 to 60% of it as well insert, uh, originating from the superior labrum. The insertion is uh, distally, it inserts along with the short head of biceps into the radial tuberosity and through the bicipital aponeurosis into the fascia of the medial forearm. Uh, the intraarticular portion of the long head of biceps is extrasynovial and it spans across the anterior aspect of the glenohumeral joint and where it runs through the bicipital groove. And the restraint of the long head of biceps anteriorly is provided by the soft tissues at the front of the shoulder, as illustrated here. So pathoanatomy, it seemed to be a primary pain generator in the um, anterior aspect of the shoulder. And as I mentioned, there's a continuum of uh, pathology from an inflammatory tendonitis through to a degenerative tendinosis. And it's thought this is likely to be secondary to continued repetitive trauma. And that mechanism was um, proposed by Refio in 1995. And with uh, ongoing inflammation, it causes inflammation of the tendon sheath itself and then further degenerative changes in the tendon. And this is a, uh, a diagram which highlights that. So initially having a, a mobile inflammatory tendon, which then um, becomes thickened along with the sheath and um, then eventually becomes uh, less mobile and degenerative. <coughs> These patients tend to pre uh, present with progressive anterior shoulder pain and declining function in the shoulder. Often they have a, a history of chronic overuse of the shoulder or overhead activities. And it, again, with any shoulder problem, it can be difficult to differentiate from other cause, causes. Uh, primary tendonitis is rare, but is more common in the younger uh, patient or those who are, uh, participate in overhead sports. And they can present with instability of the tendon and have mechanical uh, symptoms in the shoulder. Examination, similar to slap tears, can be difficult to uh, differentiate uh, long head of biceps problems from other shoulder problems. These patients will tend to have um, point tenderness in the anterior aspect of the shoulder. They can present if they've ruptured their tendon with a gross deformity and a Popeye sign. And there's Again, no real reliable specific tests that have been shown. Selective injection of either the shoulder or the uh, tendon sheath can aid in diagnosis. Um, imaging, again, x-ray to rule out other shoulder problems. MRI allows us to visualize the long head of biceps tendon and see where it lies in relation to the groove and is good for diagnosing other pathology. There's a poor correlation between um, what's seen of, on the bicep, of the biceps tendon on MRI and what's seen in arthroscopy. And um, there seemed to be a poor to moderate sensitivity for inflammation or partial tears of, partial tears of the tendon. Um, <coughs> MR arthrogram can aid as well in uh, diagnosis of other problems. Ultrasound is a relatively cost-effective uh, method of interrogating the long head of biceps, but is quite operator dependent. It's good for diagnosing dislocation from the groove, um, as well as any subluxation and rupture. Less accurate in detecting partial thickness tears. And there's been no studies actually done looking at the um, role of ultrasound and diagnosis of inflammation of the biceps. So as far as our treatment goes, first line of treatment is non-operative with rest activity modification and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. And physio can be carried out as well to um, manage any coexisting shoulder problems. Corticosteroid injection can be uh, trialed if uh, the initial line of non-operative management fails. 
Uh, this can be through either a subacromial glenohumeral injection, which can reduce secondary inflammation in the shoulder, um, as well as reducing uh, inflammation in the sheath. If the patient's still symptomatic, a uh, selective injection into the tendon sheath can be uh, undertaken, but care must be uh, made to avoid an intratendinous injection, which can lead to rupture of the tendon. And there's no good data out there on, on the efficacy of the non-operative management. Uh, that moves us to surgical management. Um, and there's a few uh, indications for surgical management of long head of biceps problems. So patients with partial thickness tears or subluxation um, and subluxation in the setting of, of cuff tears as well. Relative indications, if the patient has a slap tear along with a biceps problem um, or a failed slap repair, or if they have chronic pain that is thought to be directly attributable to the long head of biceps. And also on general, if a shoulder arthroscopy is being carried out and there's intraoperative finding of inflammation or significant hypertrophy of the biceps uh, tendon, then uh, something can be done about it at that stage. Um, there's two main treatments for problems with the long head of biceps, which is either by tenotomy or tenodesis. Um, the tenotomy is relatively simple and can provide predictable pain relief, but can cause cosmetic problems with a Popeye deformity. Um, in the literature, there's been several studies looking at the incidence of that after tenotomy, and as you can see, the, uh, the incidence varies quite a lot in different studies between 3 and 70%. Uh, patients who have added tenotomy often have fatigue discomfort where they describe a uh, cramping pain in their uh, biceps after uh, continued uh, heavy lifting. This is a good treatment for older or lower demand patients. The other option is tenodesis where an, aim is made, or where an effort is made to maintain the length tension relationship of the biceps muscle which is thought to um, prevent atrophy of the muscle and um, fatigue discomfort as well as uh, reducing cosmetic deformity. There's been several comparison studies done looking at tenotomy versus tenodesis, and it's shown that there's no difference between functional scores and patient satisfaction, but in the tenotomy groups there is a higher incidence of uh, the Popeye sign and of cramping or pain, and it's thought to be I mean, there's not really a consensus, so there's a degree of controversy as what to, is the best treatment. This uh, table here highlights some of the main studies, a lot of them which have been done in France, comparing tenotomy with tenodesis. And um, the, the key thing really is, is over on the right-hand side, there seem to be no real difference, especially in function between the groups, but there is higher incidence of deformity. Tenotomy can be performed arthroscopically. Um, initial uh, arthroscope should be done dry to assess the long head of biceps tendon. Um, it's thought that uh, fluid pressure in the shoulder can compress the peritendinous vessels and decrease the appearance of inflammation. And classically you get uh, the lipstick biceps appearance, um, which can be seen here where the long head of biceps look like, looks like it's been smeared with lipstick. A key thing in assessing the long head of biceps is the um, intertubercular portion of the long head of biceps must be brought into the field of view because that is often the symptomatic or pathological part of the, the tendon. So you can't just assess what's immediately um, apparent in the joint. And um, if it's released, it should be done as close as possible to the uh, labrum to prevent any um, flaps that uh, could flap into the shoulder joint. And um, Bradbury in 2008 suggested, in fact, taking part of the labrum to create a T-shape at the end of the tendon um, to entrap that in the bicipital groove and decrease the incidence of the Popeye sign. Tenodesis has seemed to be the preferred technique in younger persons, um, but there's, uh, again, a debate surrounding the uh, method and location of fix fixation, whether it's done proximally which can be carried out all arthroscopically. Um, and some studies there have shown a good uh, biceps power with a proximal um, fixation, or it can be done distally. And proponents for distal fixation say that the proximal part of the tendon is often the symptomatic part, so that should be excised and can lead to reduced post-operative pain. 
and it's saying there's a lower revision rate. Post-operative management involves putting these patients in a sling for three to four weeks and the duration of, of immobilisation should really come down to other procedures or other pathology in the shoulder. The patients can have full active glenohumeral motion within six weeks but shouldn't have any active elbow flexion or forearm supination, um, both of which activate the biceps until after six weeks. They can now uh, go into unrestricted activity in three to four months. So a summary of long head of biceps tendinopathy. It's a common cause of shoulder pain. Management should be non-operative initially. Um, and that could be followed by corticosteroid injection, either as a diagnostic or therapeutic means. Um, failed non-operative management, uh, these patients can then go on to surgery, and that can be done either via a tenotomy or tenodesis. Some references. Okay.